Hi guys, hope you're Okay, I don't know if I need, yeah, I think this helps much more. <laughs> okay, so lately, well not lately actually, for the past couple of months, I've been really interested in the different discussions about the entertainment industry and there are a lot of interesting conversation on LinkedIn. But for some reason, LinkedIn does not prioritize their saving posts feature. First of all, finding your safe posts is a whole treasure hunt in itself. But then also, you can't categorize your posts. So sometimes you save posts because it's like a, a jobs, it's like a job post, or or it's I don't know like motivational stuff, or sometimes it's just like a very in interesting discussion. So I'm making this mini series within my entertainment discussions to update the LinkedIn news that I've seen. Some of them are from six months ago, I don't know. But I still want to talk about them because they're quite interesting. And let's get on to it. Before starting with the five news, I, last night, I was looking for some, for some on Netflix. And there it was. It was a uh, award show and they were streaming it live. And I was so surprised and I was really happy because I've heard that Netflix was going to live stream boxing match I don't know, I'm not um, I don't know anything about that world but I think it's quite interesting that Netflix is tapping into those streaming uh, not streaming live events I find it interesting because I don't have a TV at home both in Canada and in the UK because everyone is essentially on streaming platforms or has YouTube but I'm actually interested that Netflix has the potential to stream live stream events such as red carpets or I don't know sports it would make it more accessible for people who are abroad and would like to watch it live and also can always go back to watching the event if they missed it rather than seeing it on social media and have multiple summaries where you just want to watch the whole entire whole thing and I'm interesting I wouldn't be surprised if Netflix were in a couple of years sponsor the Met Gala, and we were be able to see the red carpet, yeah, or something like that. Because I remember when the Met Gala did its thing on their own platform, it was a bit all over the place, and I I would think that Netflix would be able to do it properly. No offense to Vogue's team, but I would think Netflix would do it a bit better. Okay, but let's go on to the news that I wanted to talk about. So the first news, watch th this was like. A couple months ago but it was an article about coca-cola taking the initiative and creating a coca-cola studio to create original music for their ads I i'm not surprised but then again i'm like okay so essentially the article was saying that coca-cola has launched coke studio a platform dedicated to creating original songs with multiple artists and the main issue for them is that licensing okay licensing is gonna be a big word in this video i i think nowadays we see companies being i don't want to say greedy but they want to own every they want to control as much stuff as possible essentially because coca-cola apparently is getting tired of licensing music they want to it's like a way to to maintain control of the music for their ads here's the thing does that mean that every brand that is going to commer commercialize their product is going to have their own little studios. I don't think so because first of all, Coca-Cola is huge, okay? They're a big brand, they have the funds to do it. Now, I'm just curious that every, I think it's like like streaming. At first it was mini Netflix and then you had, you had Disney Plus and Paramount, I, I don't even think, well, I think they have Paramount here in, in the UK or HBO Max, we don't have HBO Max here. I think it's just a US thing, but I feel like it's always those everything everyone wants to do their own thing and I, I, I highly doubt that every brand would make their own music. I, I don't think actually I would oh I was thinking I don't think Apple would make have their own studio but okay guys wait hold on maybe that ooh, maybe Apple could do it but I don't think could it be a good thing or a bad thing? Ooh I mean that would because they have Apple Music, but it's Apple Music works as a Spotify. But the, I don't know. Actually, I actually don't know. I think what Apple would be more likely to do is ask artists to make songs specifically for their ads and not necessarily create their own studios. I don't know. I, I'm just rambling at this point. But between the time I read the, the the article the first time and right now, I hadn't seen any like new development regarding this thing. 
but it is interesting because that means that Coca-Cola Coca -Cola would be actively in it's not like asking for licensing for the music but it's really much so like you're really having a, a relationship with the record labels to create specific song like authentic um authentic music for their ads i think it could be a good move for independent artists to get their music known the, the amount of time i've discovered a song through an ad because i'm like oh that's a, this is a really good song the latest song that i've discovered and it was for apple like an apple watch ad it's called lock it by honestly like audrey nuna on to the second news uh signing on a multi-year licensing with warner music it, it just shows the interdependence of tiktok with the record label the thing that has to do with licensing agreements is quite hush well you understand the concept but when it comes to numbers we don't really have that much information confidentiality clauses or ndas but usually i think what happens most of the time is it's always an artist that in like sign an NDA that talks about the numbers and that's how we get the information but the people in charge of the contracts of like license agreements we they, they won't tell you it's all hush hush so it is interesting to see how it all happens especially with the recent news about UMG and TikTok and the licensing contract but we'll talk about it later third news that I want to talk about mechanical licensing collective auditing the digital service provider like Spotify and Apple Music just to verify the royalty payments. This issue really stresses the importance of accurate reporting and payment of the in the digital music. Essentially, the Mechanical Licensing Collective, so the MLC, is responsible for collecting and distributing the royalties to the songwriters and copyright owners from the digital music services. And essentially, with these audits reporting they really want to make sure that spotify and apple music are reporting and paying the royalties correctly because first of all they don't hey if you were to know the the what's it called how much artists are being paid per stream for one for one stream it's nothing it's like it's nothing artists cannot depend they cannot live off of stream they cannot <laughs> hey it's nothing. It's nothing. And in class, in music law class, we saw um, we saw the like a graphic of, for example, if because if let's say um, it's like a ten dollar per month subscription on Spotify. So after taxes, like let's say from we we get from ten to nine. No taxes. Like, okay, we'll say ten to eight from just for taxes. Okay, taxes. Spotify will get their own cut right off the bat. Okay, out of the eight dollars left, Spotify gets their own cut. Let's say it's like from eight to to six. Okay, eight to six. Then from the six dollars left, they get a good chunk because you have the record, at the record, and you have the publishing aspect. So the labels get a good cut. Okay, out of the six dollars that are left, and then from there, if you are the performing artist, you might get like two dollars and then if you are the 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 songwriter because you might not be like the performing artist may not be the songwriter the songwriters get shit they, get, they probably get like one dollar even less than one dollar off of this room platform but here's the thing it is very important the reason why they have to make sure to pay their royalties correctly is because especially Spotify Spotify negotiated with those record labels to say what well, like we'll work something out but we need a certain percentage of whatever I think in class the like the professor said about 30% like if it has been negotiated with between Spotify and the, the, the labels because below 30% Spotify will not exist Spotify will not exist so they, they had to negotiate it. and if Spotify were not Pay, if Spotify wasn't paying correctly their royalties, the records will just say, you want it, you're gone. You're done. You're done. We don't want you anymore. And Spotify would just crumble. So because they negotiated those, oh, I like I want 30%, they have to make sure that they, they respect the contractual ag agreements. Okay? Hey, I don't use Spotify, so I don't know. It's not that I don't say I said I don't care. It, it's not that I don't care. But I don't want to be, I don't want to see a situation where record labels would have to do something like streaming platforms where 
they would have their own like music stream like music platforms and like UMG would have their own streaming platform music streaming thing and it, it would just make it it would just make the whole thing unbearable imagine having three music apps just to but no no uh, no 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 would I even be able to watch it on YouTube like huh I don't know I don't want to even I don't even want to think about this I'm too scared I'm just too scared to speak into the universe <laughs> But yeah, so essentially, these audits are very important for artists. They put out the work and they deserve to be rewarded. And to be paid fairly. Fairly. Not just be paid. Paid fairly. I, I saw um, like a video, like a news video. It's in French, but there has been a lot of issues with fake streams. Especially like in France or, or in Belgium. Well, I mean, it can happen anywhere in the world, okay? But... Spotify did say a couple months ago, oh, we might, like, artists might have penalties and all that stuff. Which also can make this these audits reports a bit harder. Especially if some of the streams, some percentage of the streams are are, are fake. If, if I can always link back to legal issues. The situation does signify the statutory implementations and responsibilities that um, those music... Through this, these statutory regulations, you have more transparency and accountability in the royalty distribution process. News number four is Apple Music offering up to 10% higher royalties for music available in spatial audio. I'm an Apple Music stan and it's more so a bonus thing. It's not, you don't, ha you don't do spatial audio then you don't get anything. It's not that the there's already like if you put your music on Apple Music, you already get royalties. But if you put it in a higher audio quality, you get a bonus. And it does help artists create songs with a better quality audio. First of all, it can help Apple Music with this commitment of better quality control. For the consumer, you have a better experience in listening to music, which I love. Wait, um, they re I don't say it's recently, but the looseless audio thing amazing essentially looseless is it's, a, it's you get the um, essentially like every detail from the original sound recording i think i get to hear the difference better from from my ipad or i don't know but hey it's so it's so good i would also say that for the artist well i think it might encourage more of uh, sound sound engineers into producing like just making, I don't want to say like better music because that's not that's not the thing. But I think it does help. It does help some engineers be more recognized. You know, you have the performer artists, but you always hear sometimes artists when they try to be like sneaky and like get their the fans really excited about this song. They're like, I may have left a, a secret message in the in a song, so listen carefully. So I think that like it really helps the music, uh, the music experience. I, and I, I, I'm, I'm happy that Apple Music is taking the initiative to pay, like, to provide a bonus for better quality. There's Amazon Music that does also provide spatial audio, but you know, Spotify they would have to, you know, make those changes to maintain to be still competitive. I think really Spotify is having a hard time. Um, you know, Apple Music has like other like it's just a um, it's just a division within the whole apple thing the whole apple brand or amazon music is just a division of the whole amazon like if a amazon music were to like not work amazon in itself is still very strong they have the whole delivery thing happening and amazon prime also is also so yeah they're, they're good spotify is really through Ooh, I don't know how they would. I think that's why they also try to incite po podcasting to get to get exclusive deals on Spotify. So that's interesting. I don't know if I don't, okay. I don't want to be rude, but I want to know if the free membership is working because if you have a free membership, I mean there are, there are the ads, so maybe that helps. But I want to know. I want to know the really different, the real difference with the free memberships on Spotify and the premium accounts and how much does it affect artists 
with royalties. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't. But I think it just hurts Spotify a bit more. I'm not saying... I don't know. I'm not saying stuff and then it will actually come true and then people will get mad at me. I'm sorry. I'm just asking questions. I'm so sorry. Oh my god. Please don't come for me. Oh my god. But essentially, um, this Apple Music special audio bonus royalty thing does... If I can always link back to a music law perspective. It's... Um, I wrote that it does contribute to the evolution of the royalty distribution and also just like it just incites creativity and just a better music listening consumption experience yeah okay my last news for this episode is we've heard it all the music uh, universal music group stopping putting stop to their licensing agreement with tiktok now people were mad, people were sad, people were happy, people were, I don't know. People were going through the whole six degrees of, den of of grief. So essentially, UMG decided to stop the licensing agreement with TikTok for unsuccessful, unsuccessful negotiation regarding fair compensation for artists and songwriters, but also anything that concerned the AI, AI issues, AI-generated content, and there was also another thing. Essentially, what is funny is that on one side, UMG is saying, they didn't want to, like, there wasn't fair compensation, and then TikTok was like, no, UMG is just being greedy. So, I think you're both being greedy, okay? This is all I'm gonna say. Now, here's the thing. I think the main argument with this legal, I was say legal beef <laughs> between the two companies is they both want what's best for the artist, but it's just not, it doesn't look like the artist is being, is being valued in this issue. Now, it's it's very interesting because a couple of months ago, even a year ago, a lot of artists were saying my label is forcing me to market my song on TikTok and I don't like this. And now you have UMG saying, peace out. And artists are not able to market, to, to do the marketing for the, their song release on TikTok. I was one thing, I also think that I think we have overvalued, no, overestimated the impact of TikTok in the music industry, especially when it comes to new artists. I think it's a good thing that UMG is pulling out for, I'm pretty sure they're gonna come back, okay? Like, but for now, I do think that UMG pulling out of TikTok is kind of a good thing because I think especially with TikTok, we have seen a lack of artist development for new musicians and people saying, oh, I, I did, I, I went to a meeting with record labels and they said that I had a talent but because I didn't have enough subscribers enough, an, and enough audience on my social medias, they were not going to, they were not going to take the risk to invest in my, in my, my music and in my, in my career. Which I find it so sad because, a, I don't want to say a lot, but from what I'm seeing, the artists that blow up on TikTok don't have the longevity to be established artists for the long run they might be like it for one two years and then we don't hear about them again or it's just it's really hard for them and i think that like we do need this comeback of artist development now people might people might say oh but i don't know tyla has been like she 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 blew up on tiktok but i think she was already developed as an artist back in south africa i don't know much i don't know too much about her but i do see that she already had, she, she, if you see her interview, she's very well, she knows what to say, she knows how to, to, she knows how to engage with people, and I think it was just like a viral moment, but she, she already had something that in her, right? Now, what does it mean for other labels, independent artists? That means that there's less competition and they can, they can just promote their music more because there's less competition. Now, for UMG, I would think that, I think, UMG might go the they're just gonna focus with YouTube and Instagram. I think it just works best for them. Or they, they just might go the original route of traditional media. So, you know, you have a song on it on an ad or you have a song in a movie and a song. So I think this these are the ways. Um but it's I I'm pretty sure in a couple of months we're gonna hear something about you know what TikTok did decide to to raise to bump their <laughs> the like the compensation for artists now i do think that the 
AI generated content issue is very valid because TikTok doesn't seem to have control of AI generated content. You hear always like Drake cover or like Ariana cover for a song that just doesn't exist or it's just astonishing. Sometimes I'm like, oh my god, what is it? What is this new song? And it's actually just like, uh, it's just, it's horrible. It's actually kind of, kind of horrendous. So I do understand that um, that concern from from you. And to go back to the what I was saying about maybe less competition for other labels and independent artists, and potentially maybe a comeback of artist development. I would be happy to see a comeback in artist development because essentially artist essentially artists would just be more focus on creating on creating songs that are aligned with who they are instead of trying to chase this TikTok formula, this TikTok fame. <laughs> I was talking about this with a friend of mine and we were saying is the music industry in a recession because like the for it's like the same type of formula for these songs and I feel like artists might I I, I don't know if artists artists are, are stuck because they have to like chase those numbers to like to please the record labels but also like to satisfy like they need money to survive right i don't know i, I don't know what what would we need what do we need okay on the short term who does it hurt more actually it hurts them both but in long term it hurts more the artist um which is the shame but this whole licensing i see beef but this licensing disagreement which is like more <laughs> more of a appropriate word to use it just shows how in the in the codependent the TikTok and UMG are UMG no UMG needs TikTok just like TikTok needs UMG I might say that TikTok needs more UMG than to, UMG needs TikTok but the way I'm seeing it if TikTok managed to remove put a, a stop with TikTok I, I would not be surprised if they were to put a stop on Spotify because again like like we were saying you know making sure that the stream honestly I think streaming this the stream the stream value really needs to be reevaluated because all the stream is not a clear it's not a clear factor to this to determine someone's success I'm pretty sure you cannot see a, a, a monthly listener thing on Apple music but on Spotify a lot of people like this artist got this many streams or this uh, they have that many monthly listeners and I don't think that's an accurate and I would like to know how accurate that is do we need to reevaluate the the stream value I'm trying to think what would be the next step are we going back to traditional media but how would that work does MTV have does MTV still have this like big impact but that's the thing also with MTV MTV like it's a very North American thing does it translate well worldwide and i think tiktok did that well in the sense of eh, i don't say tiktok did that well but mm, in, in the sense that the music that you hear on tiktok can just reach a wide audience very quickly tiktok is fairly new which is why they're still figuring it out that's why you don't hear something about instagram and a record label having beef Ugh, having it having issues <laughs> not agreeing having disagreements um same thing with youtube god forbid youtube were hey there's nothing about this but at this point i don't know i'm lost i'm confused i need answers but i want to know if you're using tiktok is there a, is there like a significant shift in the music in like in how music is used on the app are, are you more mainly is is it more like commentary videos now or is it more like is music still very present? I, w I would like to think like if Instagram didn't have music, would I not use Instagram? I think Instagram has the potential. If there was music, I think people would just go back to sharing photos, to just photos or just share stories, right? I mean, I think, I don't know if Reels would be... Maybe Reels? I don't know. It just shows you how music is important in our daily lives, guys. Don't mess with the record labels. Please, don't. But honestly, I would really... I would... Like if... There could be like a something in my 2024 wish list. It's just a come at artist development comeback. I think that's pretty much it. I know this first LinkedIn news reporting 
video was very music oriented but it just shows you the different issues in the music industries the different dynamics between the brands the record label Lindsay, if you're watching this please prioritize your saved post features please i'm begging you and with that being said i hope you like the video and i'll see you guys next time bye